Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am hopping on to talk about uh, something that I mentioned in, I think it was another video that I was talking about this and um, I was getting ready for a class, a drop spindle class, and um, I had come across some conflicting, um, conflicting things than what I had learned originally. And I, at this point, I think it was probably something that was um, just misspoken and possibly written down the wrong way. Um, I took a drop spindle class from a, an older lady. Um, she was probably in her late 70s, early 80s um, when she taught the class. And when I learned, um, the concept was um, clockwise spin is um, how you ply and and remember this is 20 years ago I think the internet has changed um, the dynamics of yarn making to some degree because I think um, as there's more and more exposure to people doing things I think more and more people are trying things there's different things that have come um, art yarns were not a thing back 20 years ago um, I as far as I know there were no Art yarns um, a lot of the yarn you could get back in the day was just basic you know three or four ply yarns um, and so yarn has come a long long way in the last 20 years since I learned how to make it um, and so when I learned I learned um, you put you ply onto and again it was a drop spindle so you ply onto your spindle going clockwise and you um, ply two together going counterclockwise the opposite direction that was the basics and in the worksheet that I brought home she had written that the clockwise was an S um, an S twist and I never really gave much thought to it um, it wasn't something that I looked deeply into obviously because th this a couple few weeks ago when I taught the class and I was getting all my paperwork and stuff ready um, to give to them I started thinking about that and I'm like that's not right because um, you can tell by looking at the yarn which way it's twisted and it does make in the grand scheme overall it does not make a big difference what you do or how you do it um, you just want to be consistent with it but it does make a difference um, with uh, the technique um, if you are a crocheter, it does make a difference. Although most yarns today are manufactured or made with the idea that you clockwise to put it on, counterclockwise to ply it. Um, and I don't think the commercial yarns go, I, as far as I know, and I could be wrong, uh, maybe one of you will correct me, but I'm pretty certain that most of the commercial yarns are done um, today in a clockwise motion to to single and then counterclockwise to ply um, because it works so I'm gonna try to explain it a little bit I, I know there was a lot of people that were like I never get it and I don't understand it and um, I didn't either until I started looking into it and thinking about it and the more I thought about it the more it drove me nuts so I even I have visuals I have a wipey board today so I'm gonna to try to explain this is not gonna be a long video because there's really not a lot to it um, but I'm gonna to try to explain the S twist in the Z twist so and, and basically what it boils down to is this if you um, ply your bobbins do one bobbin and you do it clockwise you always want to do the other bobbin clockwise and then when you ply them, you will counterclockwise them. The same being, if you do a single counterclockwise, you want to do your other bobbin counterclockwise, and then you apply them counter or clockwise. Yes. So um, I hope I said that right. I think I did. But that's the basic. You just want to stay consistent with your yarn making. Um, whatever way you do it. So basically what it comes down to is you don't want a bobbin that has been clockwise spun and a bobbin that's been counterclockwise spun and you're going to try to to ply them because it's not going to it won't go well. It won't it won't look right. So 
Um, the S twist and Z twist is really easy. I'm going to, I'm going to draw it and then I'm going to show you, I've been working on some yarn, um, this week to kind of give you an example. And, um, so when they talk about an S twist and a Z twist, essentially that's just what the twist looks like. So, um, when you think of, let me write this first. So this one is clockwise. When you think of your wheel spinning or your drop spindle spinning, when your drop spindle spins, you're looking down on it, which way it's spinning. Um, you are putting twist into it. And when you clockwise spin, um, when you're spinning clockwise, you are moving the yarn to the right. So, if you think about, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of what the best way to do this is. When you think about spinning clockwise, you've got your yarn moving in this motion here, which creates the, it's going that way. So this is moving that way. And when you put that together, it looks like a Z twist in there. And that's how you can remember it. Um, when you do counterclockwise, and you guys won't be able to see this, um, when you do counterclockwise, you and I know that these are backwards, so um, you are spinning the opposite direction, and so your twist is going to go in the opposite way. That's where the S comes in. Um, super simple. And it has to do with, um, let me see, I'm gonna try to hold these up. These are samples that I did, and I'm hoping that you can see them. I know the letters are all backwards. I am not that talented, um, but, and I may take a snapshot um, of this laying down and at, put it at the end here. But essentially, if you look, you can see the Z um, direction, which is this middle bar is what they're talking about. The middle bar of the Z, which direction is that running? That's the direction your fiber's running. And same with the S, which direction is this middle section of your S running? Um, that's the direction that the yarn is running. So I'll take a picture of this and put it at the end. Um, and it becomes even more pronounced when you ply the yarn. So I have um, done, I did a Z single, which is a clockwise motion with an S ply. And so if you look here, you can see um, that this ends up being an S, you can see it in the, in the yarn because the finished part of that, even though it was a Z to begin with, um, when you apply it, it became an S twist um, because that's that's what happens when you do that. And then here is a S single with a Z ply to it. And so you can see the Z motion in the yarn. Um, it is really hard. I realized doing this, the two different variations of the yarn, um, I don't think I've ever made a yarn. I have just always stuck with the basic simple um, counterclockwise or clockwise to ply, counterclockwise to, I'm sorry, clockwise to do a single and counterclockwise to ply. That's what I've always done. I don't think I've ever um, done a counterclockwise single motion. And so I do have yarn. And again, I will add pictures in here. So this is just a basic, um, regular, so Z is the clockwise motion. This is a Z um, single with an S plied counterclockwise, and that's what the yarn looks like. Now, when I take, and you can see it in the yarn, I'm not sure if it's gonna come through on the camera. Um, again, I will try to take a picture. Yeah, I think you can see the difference slightly. Um, I apologize for the noise. We have the windows open because it's like 70 degrees today. <laughs> so 
you can see so this is the opposite of anything I've ever done which is um, counterclockwise single clockwise to ply and it does give you a different look to your yarn and you can I'm pretty sure you're gonna catch it on here too um, so the only thing that I would say the re the only reason and um, I've never run into huge issues with this, but it is something to think about as you're creating yarn. Um, you can get, I think you can get some different looking yarn. It does, like for me to look down at it, um, I can tell the difference in the plies by looking at it now. The thing to think about is for crocheters, I don't know if you've ever run into, I know I have a hundred times, I've been crocheting for uh, well over 30 years now and um, there have been times when I've worked with certain yarns and when you're um, working with it you split the yarn with your hook or it splits and part of that is because most yarn is made the the Z twist first with the S to ply and that is backwards of what you do when you're crocheting so when you're crocheting you're wrapping the hook around and that wrap is opposite um, of what normal yarn would be so I'm actually holding my my uh, Z plied yarn so this is the S single Z plied and it makes it so that the twist is the same as your wrap with crocheting um, so I could see how you're not undoing your yarn um, I guess so to speak I never run into huge issues where I think oh I have to I have to do this I have to change up my spinning all the time because of the way um, it looks when I crochet but it does make a difference when you think about it because when you're wrapping your yarn um, you're to some degree you're gonna untwist your um, your S plied yarn so hopefully I haven't confused you more today. I did want to, I did want to jump into this because um, a lot of people had questions. A lot of people were like, I don't understand. And it's really not difficult as long as you remember um, that whatever your two bobbins or three bobbins, you, all, you want them all to be consistent um, when you ply, with, whichever one you choose. Now for me to do a single plot, like to do the... Um, the spinning onto my bobbin going counterclockwise was super uh, <laughs> it messed with my brain it didn't quite feel right um, and so I don't know that I'll change for any reason um, it's just kind of interesting it's good information to have and when you do the different plines in the different twist you can see it in the yarn so again I'll throw a couple pictures here at the end um, so I hope this video was helpful I hope that um, it made sense and if you have any questions or comments please put them down below if you don't already please subscribe to my channel I would appreciate that and click the like button on this video um, I continue to work on them I'm actually gonna film two more today I'm getting to um, a one bobbin um, yarn which um, I haven't done before I've done one bobbin Angora but this is just gonna be a um, I'm not even sure what blend of the braid I have but I wanted to do a one bobbin yarn because I'm fascinated with one bobbin yarns and or not one bobbin I'm sorry one ply just a single ply yarn um, is what I'm gonna work on for the one of the next videos and I'm also gonna jump into my Angora fiber um, finally and I'm gonna start that um, today hopefully so I'll be uh, cleaning and washing that and doing a video on it so if there is any other videos you would like me to do please um, put that down in the box below I I always am looking for new ideas I'm afraid at some point I will run out and then somebody mentions something and I continue to have more ideas for my videos so I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I hope you get to create something bye